afternoon, everybody. Welcome to a very special edition of Turning Two Tunes. My name is Hannah Martin, and I am your host of the very best country music and baseball talk show around. I've got a really exciting show for you planned today. We've got lots to talk about on the baseball circuit. Last night, the Yankees were eliminated from the playoffs, and Houston, the Houston Astros, are headed to the World Series. They're going to play the Dodgers. The Red Sox have a new manager. We're going to talk about all of this on today's show. It's going to be really exciting. Uh, you can call in today at any point in the show to talk with me. Uh, we can talk about anything you want. doesn't have to be baseball related. We can talk about how great the Cougs were last night getting that 28-0 victory over N- Colorado. I was going to say Nevada, but we already beat Nevada. Um, we we beat Colorado last night, and it was very exciting. So if you want to talk about that, give me a call. Uh, to be on the air, the best time to call in is when I'm playing music so I can get to your call right away. And that number... Here it is. I'll repeat it lots throughout the show. 509-335-2207. All right, y'all. We're going to start off the show today with a station favorite. This is Suitcase by Steve Mokler. All right, y'all. We are back on the air. Very exciting. Um, So as I said earlier, um, we had uh, quite the win here in uh, Pullman last night. Uh, We had a 7.45 start time, which is late, um, especially when you have to stay for the whole of the whole football game there. Um, But we uh, the Kooks got it done and they beat the Colorado Buffaloes 28 to nothing. So now the Kooks are seven and one after that, like freak loss to Cal a couple weeks back. And it, Kooks are back on track. They looked great last night. The band sounded great. Uh, it was um, the weather was a nightmare last night. So shout out to each and every one of you who showed up to the game and stayed for the whole thing and toughed it out for your Kooks. Just a round of applause for you guys. <laughs> round of applause. Very nice to the uh, Cougar faithful, the Crim Zone there. Um, love you. Great job. Uh, great job to the Cougs, obviously, the band, the fans, everybody. It was great. Um, <laughs> yeah. It was it was great. I love Cougar football games. I'm um, actually only w- working one more. We have Dad's Weekend coming up on November 4th. Um, we're going to play Stanford, uh, which is going to be a great game. I'm really excited for that one. Um, and that closes out our, our home season there. And I'm, I'm kind of sad about it. I was talking to one of my friends who's in the band this morning. And we were like, you know, it's a lot of work that goes into these football games. But, but it's so much fun. You know, it's so fun to be at the at the I was going to say at the ballpark um, at the stadium at the stadium and uh, hanging out and getting to watch the Cougs win some football, especially when they're winning. It's really fun. Um, We're going to switch gears here, though. We're going to turn from football to baseball because this is a baseball show. Um, Obviously, the uh, biggest baseball story right now. Game seven of the American League Championship Series was last night. Uh, the Astros and the Yankees faced off against each other in Houston. And, of course, you know I had it on in the press box. I work in the press box during games. Um, and all the other TVs, because each like booth, so there's the replay booth, there's the public address booth where I am, stats booth, radio booth, TV booth, ESPN's booth, um, and they all have their own TV in there. And so everybody had um, like the, the Utah game on or a, a football game on, and I was the only booth um, who had the, the baseball game on because of course I did. Um, so I was watching that. And uh, it was CC Sabathia versus Charlie Morton, um, which, you know, the Astros were sticking their postseason uh, hopes on Charlie Morton. And it paid off for them because they did get the win last night, four to nothing. Um, it was a good game. I will tell you, there was one part in the game that drove me absolutely crazy. And everybody in the press box uh, who was in the public address booth with me, uh, they, they got an earful of it. Um, in, oh, when was it? It was the fifth or sixth inning, I want to say. Um, the Astros were up uh, one to nothing. Uh, CeCe Sabathia came out of the game, and um, Tommy Canely came in for the Yankees. He comes in, he gets an out, 
And then he gives up a home run to Jose Altuve, a solo shot. So, you know, so it was 2 nothing at that point. Um, and then he gives up, he, he walks um, Correa. And then he gives up a, a hit to uh, Marwin Gonzalez. And I say to myself at that point, and by myself, I mean, I like hiss it under my breath and everyone around me hears it. I'm like... Joe, being Joe Girardi, the manager of the Yankees, he needs to get Canely out of there. He he needs to get him out of there. Like this is such a big game for I, it's Game Seven, and this this pitcher that you have, um, I don't know, I, I don't know what Girardi was thinking. He I, the Canely had given up three hits. He's he or two hits and a walk. Uh, it's first and third with just the one out. In a, in a two nothing game, you can't afford to give up another run here. You have to bring in, especially because the Yankees have such a good bullpen. I mean, that's all we heard about for for months now is how good that Yankee bullpen is. And Joe Girardi sits on his hands and says, "All right, Tommy Canley, you're gonna go for it." Um, he he did strike out the next batter, but Evan Gaddis comes to the plate. Was it Evan Gaddis? I believe so. Or maybe it was Brian McCann. It was it was it was one of the guys uh hitting down in the lineup. Comes up, rips a double to right field, and two run score. And it's for nothing. And that's the game. I mean, at that point, it was such a deflating feel for the Yankees. I mean, I'm not a Yankee fan, but it it felt like the Astros had won at that point. That for me, that was the real, that was the game on the line. And Joe Girardi didn't make a move there. And I honest to God, I don't know why. I don't know if you like the matchups, but I mean, it's not like Kane Lee is like a seasoned veteran where you're going to put him out there and say, um, okay, uh, you have a track record of getting out of these, uh, you know, uh, high stress situations and big games. I'll leave you in there. No, he gave he only gave CC three and a third, and then um, uh, somebody else came in. Uh, Chad Green came in, and then they bring Tommy Canley in. Um, I mean, I don't. I'm sure there is some rationale behind it, and I'll actually I'll look that up um once I hop off here. But to me, in that moment, it made no sense. Obviously, this guy doesn't have it today. A home run, a walk, and a single. I mean. Get, get him out of there. This is game seven. Like, what do you have to lose? Like, you're going to hurt his feelings by pulling him out of there? This is game seven. You have to make a move. Why not bring in Adam Warren? I know Joe Girardi does not want to go to Dylan Batanzas. I mean, everybody knows that. Why not, uh, why not bring in one of your starters who's had some rest? Bring in, uh, bring in somebody. I mean, the Astros brought in Lance McCullers late in the game. Why... I don't know. I honest, honestly, I don't know why Joe Girardi stuck with him. And that's like, like I said, that to me was the turning point of the game. I knew something bad was going to happen. I, I knew it was going to be then when first and third with one out and Joe Girardi doesn't make a move to the pen. I knew it. I, I actually, I texted my family. I actually got in some trouble with this last night. I texted my family and my brother and my dad are both big Yankee fans. And I said, Joe needs to get him out of there. And of course my mom and my sister are like, what? Like they probably guessed it was about the Yankees because I've been talking trash about them in, in the group chat all weekend. Um, but I said, Joe, get him out of there. Like, I was telling anyone who would listen. I was like, this, the, I was like, chicken little. Like, the sky is falling. The sky is falling. Joe, get him out of there. Get him out of there, Joe. Um, nobody listened because, you know, I'm sure everybody wants to listen to me. Um, but it seemed like such a common sense move. And I, te- my brother was like, oh, you're not an MLB manager. I'm like, I'm just not an idiot. Like, that's how I felt in that moment. I was like, this is such an easy move. Like, go to your pen. You have a great pen. You've got Adam Warren warming up. And you stick with... (sighs) It just... I didn't get it. And I didn't get earlier um, in uh, in the Cleveland series when there was that whole debacle when Francisco Lindor hit that grand slam and... um, but before that, the batter before Francisco Lindor got hit and it didn't look like he got hit and it was a foul tip or something. And Joe Girardi didn't challenge it and he just sat on his hands. I'm like, Joe, what are you doing? What are you doing, baby? Come on. I just, I don't know. 
I, I I'm not sure on Joe Girardi's contract, but I know there have been rumblings um, from a lot of the fans that I've been seeing um, some commentators on Joe Girardi's um, stint with the Yankees. Um, I, I, I these I just it's hard to wrap my mind around them. And I try to say to myself, OK, I'm not Joe Girardi. I, none of us are. None of the people watching at home know what it's like to be managing a professional baseball team let alone the New York Yankees none of us know in the game moments and the stress that that comes with but it's just like why not challenge the ball why not go to the pen like it's not it's like it like baseball is just like a big chess game to me and it's always about outmaneuvering your opponents and these moves they just seem like such simple moves like oh like to open the game like oh you you're gonna move one of your pawns out like that's what to me it feels like it's like challenging that ball in Cleveland, move one of the pawns out. Like, it's just so simple. I, it, that, that situation last night just blew my mind, especially in a game seven. If this was uh game six and the Yankees have a little wiggle room, uh, I, I, I'm like, all right, all right, this is game seven. Go to your freaking pen. Come on, go to your pen. <sighs> Astros win four nothing. Yankees are done. So, um, now, I had to apologize to my family. I was like, sorry, I dragged the Yankees too hard because there were some hurt feelings, I guess. Um, but the Astros and the Dodgers will be facing each other in the World Series, and it's going to be a great World Series. I am so excited for this World Series. It's going to be in L.A. to start off, and then they're going to head back to Houston. I don't know who I like in this series. I think probably the Dodgers. Um, but it, it's a, it, it can go either way. I'm hoping for seven games. Um, yeah, it'll just be really good baseball. So, I mean, I'm really excited. I mean, Verlander has pitched so well. We're going to get to see. We're finally going to get to see Clayton Kershaw pitch a World Series game. And if that doesn't get you excited, you're probably not a baseball fan. So <laughs> probably a lot of you are not excited by that. But I am super, super excited. Game one to see. It'll, prob it'll probably be a Verlander-Kershaw matchup. And I am so excited. I'll be glued to my TV this whole series, except when I have to like go do other things. But I'll be watching. You should be watching too. And you know what else you should do? You should give me a call. Let's talk about Joe Girardi. Let's talk about the in-game managing. Let's talk about the Yankees, the Astros, the Dodgers, what's happen what's going to happen with the series. Uh, next time I come back on, we are, are going to talk about the Astros and the Dodgers. Uh, and then we're going to talk about the Red Sox because they're going to get a new manager. It's going to be It's going to be great. Astros Dodgers coming up. Give me a call, 509-335-2207. Let's talk about the Yankees. Let's do it. Here's some more music for you guys. All right, and we are back. So I did a little bit of research during the break because what else am I going to do? Like homework? No. Um, so uh, an article that was published in the New York Daily News on before game seven on Saturday at seven o'clock. So like right before or not even um, not even right before oh, I was updated on Saturday. I was like, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, article in the New York Daily News says that Joe Girardi um, would not go to Tanaka or Severino um, in game seven. Um, he said that he wanted to exhaust all of his bullpen options before he went to a starter in relief, such as Sonny Gray. Um, David Robertson was available last night. Um, and, but the plan from the start was to go from CC Sabathia to Tommy Canely to Chapman. Um, I mean, that's a, that's a nice plan in theory, but it, it obviously didn't work out for the Yankees. Um, I mean, if, if that was Joe Girardi's plan from the start, I guess that, I mean, I, I guess that was his plan, but you know, plans change. Um, I don't know. The whole thing just confused me. Uh, also did a little research, uh, game one of the world series. It's going to be Kershaw versus Keuchel and then Verlander will start game two. The Dodgers have not announced their game two starter yet. Um, but Keuchel versus Kershaw I'm still excited for that matchup like even if it's not Verlander Kershaw we'll probably see that we might see that later in the series who knows but I, I like 
Um, I like a, a Keuchel versus Kershaw game. I'm really, I'm just really excited for some good old fashioned baseball. It's great. It's going to be great. I'm so excited. Um, this is going to be such an exciting World Series. You have the Astros with, obviously, this really high-powered offense. Uh, the pitching has been great for them. Uh, and then the Dodgers, on the flip side, they also have a really great offense. I mean, they won 100 games this year. Uh, and they have Clayton Kershaw. They've got that really great bullpen. I mean, Kenley Jansen has been great for them all year long. Um it's going to be great. It's it's how it should be. It's the two best teams from each league coming to meet each other in the playoffs. Um, another thing I think was interesting and what we learned from that Yankee series is like what one player means to a team. Like all year it's been when Aaron Judge has been hot for the Yankees, the Yankees have done well. And when he hasn't, the Yankees have not done well. Um, I don't think Aaron Judge had great numbers last night. I know he made like that huge like that that catch in like the first or second innings um when he like slammed into the right field wall and everybody went crazy and I was like I hate that guy um but let's see judge had uh he didn't have a hit he didn't have a hit last night uh he struck out once and he left two on base and four uh four plate appearances so it, it's been the story all year that, that when Aaron Judge has not done well for the Yankees. The Yankees have not done well. And so last night we saw that. I mean, in the in when the Yankees won those three games uh in New York, Aaron Judge was doing well for them. Aaron Judge was hitting home runs. Aaron Judge had that uh he had a big double or something. Um and so I'm I'm interested to see if that's true for this Houston Dodgers series. I mean, Jose Altuve, like is there anything bad about this guy? Like how how much can I say about how good Jose Altuve is as a player. He's hitting like 400 this postseason. He's hitting home runs. He had a home run last night. He's uh, His defense is great. He's a gold glove second baseman. I mean, he is... He is he is the MVP of the American League, obviously. And anyone who says Aaron Judges can like take a hike very, very far away from me. Um, but I'm interested to see that if Jose Altuve struggles during the World Series, how will that affect the team? Um, because they have so many other weapons. They have Carlos Correa and Marwin Gonzalez, who, this will shock you, I heard this last night, Marwin Gonzalez led the Astros in RBIs for this season. He had like, um, I can't remember, 90 or something? Uh, it, that was amazing to me. Like, you don't think, you would think, Jose Altuve, Carlos Correa, George Springer. No, Marwin Gonzalez led them in RBIs. That is wild to me. Um, but they can hit you so many in so many different spots because that lineup is stacked. You go Springer, Altuve, Correa. They've got Evan Gaddis. They've got Brian McCann. They've got Marwin Gonzalez. I mean, they have so many guys who are who can leave the ballpark, who can hit a double, who can really uh, just put runs on the board like that, like just go really quick. Um, the Dodgers, on the other hand, they also. I mean, Yasiel Puig has been tremendous for them. Those are the those are the two the two stars for me. Although Chris Taylor has kind of come out of nowhere um, for the for the Dodgers and done really well for them. He's had two home runs this postseason. Uh, but Yasiel Puig has just been like tremendous for them and people are getting mad that he's flipping his bat. But like whatever, like please. Um, so Jose Altuve for the Astros, Yasiel Puig for the Dodgers. Those are your two make or break guys, I'm thinking. Um, but they've got Justin Turner. They've got obviously Clayton Kershaw. Um, they have, they've got so many guys, it, both teams have so many impact players in the lineup, um, that it's just going to be so exciting to watch. And I'm, I'm so excited. I am like praying and crossing my fingers and I'm going to like have all of my friends to do the same thing. I want seven games. Like I want a seven game series. Like last year with the Cubs in Cleveland, do you remember how crazy that series was? Just like how good I was getting texts from all of my friends who don't watch baseball, who were like, Oh my God, Hannah, I'm watching this game. Are you watching? This is crazy. I want that again. Like I want seven games. I want it to be I want home runs I want great catches I want great pitching I want big strikeouts I want it all what's that high school musical song I want it all that's what I want get your pay in here I want it all 
Uh, I'm really excited for this series, as you can probably tell. I want to hear your thoughts on the series, though. Give me a call, 509-335-2207. You excited for this series? You looking forward to seven games? Are you crossing your fingers along with me? 509-335-2207. We're going to jump back into some music here. You are listening to KZUU 90.7 FM Pullman. We are a broadcast service of the ASWSU. The views and opinions of this program do not reflect the views of KZUU Radio, the ASWSU, or Washington State University. All right. Well, just in the nick of time, the Red Sox actually just announced uh, that their new manager is Alex Cora. Um, it had been rumored and I was planning to talk about like the rumor of it on today's program. Um, but I'm so excited that they announced it, um, right in time for the show. Like very, very considerate of them. Um, Alex Cora is the, uh, I guess was now was the bench coach for the Houston Astros. Uh, and he is coming over, uh, to manage the Red Sox. Uh, the manager, the, the Red Sox fired their former manager, uh, John Farrell. Um, he had been with them since the 2013 series. Yes, because, oh my God, they had, um, oh good Lord, they had Bobby Valentine with them in 2012 after they fired Terry Francona. Um, yeah, that was a mess. Um, but anyway, Alex Cora, uh, is going to come in and replace John Farrell. Um, and I'm really, I'm actually super excited for it. Um, a lot of people are like, oh, he's a younger manager. He's, he's actually, he's never managed before. Um, he played, um, but I mean, he, he has plenty of playing experience. He played, um, from 1998 through 2011. Uh, and he was an ESPN analyst for a little while there. Um, I'm really excited about this. I think the Red Sox, this is exactly, I was just talking to somebody about this the other day. This is exactly what the Red Sox need. They need a younger guy who is going to come in and, and bring a lot of energy to this team because they know how to play baseball. They've got veteran guys who know how to, they know how to play. Um, they've got, you know, like Dustin Madroya and David Price who, you know, they can help the younger guys. They need a manager who is excited, who is ready to go day in and day out, ready to win, ready to just leave it all on the field. And, you know, I'm not I'm not sure that was John Farrell. And I think that's part of why he left. It wasn't that he was a bad manager. It's just that he wasn't what the Red Sox needed at this point in time. Um, And you know, maybe John Farrell will be, will pick up a job somewhere else because I do think he's a really great manager. Obviously he managed the Red Sox to, to, uh, two division titles as well as a world series. Um, but the Red Sox, they, I, I keep saying it. I mean, week after week now, the Red Sox need someone with energy. There is the playoffs this season. It was more evident than ever that this team just didn't have any energy. I mean, when I got that email and you know, I've talked about it. If you've listened you have heard this story. My friends have heard this story. The guys in the press box on, on uh, Cougar Football Saturdays, they've now heard this story. Um, Red Sox are playing 1130 on a Sunday in the playoffs. Game three, I got an email at 830 saying there were still tickets available and that I should come to the game. Um, no one cared, obviously, if no one could even show up to the ballpark for a, uh, a playoff game in Boston. Uh, obviously there was a problem with the energy level and the enthusiasm. Um, so I really think they, they just need someone to jumpstart this team. Um, and I think Alex Cora is, is that guy. Um, I, I, I prefer that over, um, someone who maybe has a little bit more experience or is a little older. I heard Brad Osmus's name floated in around for a while and I was getting a little nervous because no, no bueno on Brad Osmus. Like, he got fired, um, as Tigers manager after like doing nothing for three or four years. Um, and no, um, but I'm, I'm excited that Alex Cora is a new manager of the Boston Red Sox. I think it will be really interesting. Um, I think he's gonna, he's gonna flow with the guys really well. Um, I think a younger guy is definitely going to come in and help, help, um, them out. 
Um, it, it's important that he's he's like a likable guy in that clubhouse. Um, I can't remember who told the story, um, but I, I, I think about it a lot. Uh, it was this season, and somebody was talking about Terry Francona, who used to manage the Red Sox. Uh, he was a manager of the Red Sox from 2004 to 2011, and of course he managed them to two World Series titles, and he did a lot of uh, other great stuff with them. Um, and they were comparing Terry Francona to John Farrell, who was obviously the the old manager of the Red Sox. Um, and they were saying how the guys in the clubhouse would take a bullet for Terry Francona. Like they loved him so much. He was their, he was their manager. They would take a bullet for him. They loved this guy. And they just didn't feel that way about John Farrell. They were like, no, no, you know? Uh, and I think a lot of the problems, obviously I'm not going to blame, um, and these grown men's actions on John Farrell. Um, but I think that's where a lot of the dissent in the clubhouse was kind of coming from was this, this kind of low energy, no respect kind of thing for their manager. Um, and so I think change was definitely coming and needed and imminent. Uh, John Farrell actually got thrown out of his last game in a Red Sox uniform. Um, which is kind of sad, but I hope he finds another job somewhere. I think he is a really good guy and he's a really smart, uh, guy. Um, I just, it was, it was time for a change. Um, and I think this is a good change. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm nothing but happy about this. Like this is the, the best possible scenario. Um, I think that the Red Sox could have asked for, um, I know obviously they were, um, they let, um, Oh, the Diamondbacks manager who was the Red Sox bench coach. Oh, God, his name is escaping me right now. But they let him uh, They let him walk um, and go to Arizona, and he's probably going to be manager of the year. But let me let me look that up. Oh, what is his name? Um, but that was the guy that the Red Sox um, wanted to take over, but instead they renewed John Farrell's contract um, and let um, the Diamondbacks manager. What is his name? Oh my goodness. This is just going to drive me insane. I Tori Lavolo. Yes, that was him. Uh, they, they let him walk and they let him go to, um, the Diamondbacks and Diamondbacks are paying him quite a lot of money. Uh, but obviously he managed them to, uh, to a, a to a playoff, uh, playoff series. Um, so he's probably, he might be an, an NL manager of the year. We will talk about awards later in the year as once the world series is wrapped up. Um, but I mean, that was the guy that the Red Sox wanted to take over from John Farrell, but things kind of didn't happen like that. Alex Cora. I love it. I love the move. I'm really happy with it. I want to hear your thoughts though. 509-335-2207. Let me know what you're thinking about this. Um, let me know what you're thinking about anything that we've discussed so far on the show. Yankees, Astros, Dodgers, Cougs, Mariners, anything. Give me a call 509-335-2207. We're going to jump back into some more music here. All right, we are going to jump back in here. Let's update you guys with some scores. And since there are no baseball games currently going on, I'll update you some football scores. I know some people love football. So I'm going to I'm going to I'll hit you up with some scores here. Uh Bears beat the Panthers 17 to 3. Saints beat the Packers 26-17. Sorry, Hannah. Uh Titans beat the Browns 12 to 9. Jaguars beat the Colts 27 to 0. Vikings beat the Ravens 24-16. Rams beat the Cardinals 33 to nothing. The Bills beat the Buccaneers 30 to 27. The Raiders on Thursday night, that was quite the game. I was at a beat ups with my friends and we saw it. Raiders won 31 to 30. Um, and the Dolphins are currently beating the Jets with 17 seconds in the game, 31-28. Um, so we actually, me and my dad and my brother, uh, one of the guys my dad work works with, he does um, like this football pool, um, and so we do our picks every week. Um, and so I'm, I've, that's really the only reason why I'm keeping an eye on football is to see if I win or not. To be honest, um, I know a lot of people are like, oh, I love multiple sports, but no. For me, it's just, it's just baseball. I mean, I don't know. I, I know some things about football. Like I know all the teams and I know like the rules and the flags and the penalties and all that stuff. Basketball, like I'm totally clueless. Like I know a couple people, I know a couple of players and a couple teams, but, um, 
Yeah. Baseball, I mean, it's really it for me. That's that's it. It's a love story, really. Baseball was the only one for me. It was love at first sight. Um, but yeah, I'll get you those score updates. Um, give me a call. What do you guys want to talk about? Uh, we could talk about anything. We could talk about the Cougs. Um, we could talk about uh, World Series. Um, as you guys know, I'm very excited about the World Series. New Red Sox manager, the Yankees. Um, yeah, get, let's get some predictions in here. What do you guys, what are you thinking about the World Series? Do you think it's going to be the Dodgers, the Astros, and how many games? Uh, my prediction is Dodgers and seven, but that's just because I really want seven games of that series. Um, give me a call, 509-335-2207. Uh, before I head to, to the music, I do want to wish my mom a very happy birthday. Today is her birthday. So happy birthday, mom. Thank you so much for supporting me and always listening. Um, we are going to jump back into some music here. Uh, give me a call if you want to be on the radio. Very exciting. 509-335-2207. Here we go, guys. 